you want to get off of it and you know you don't want to be out here on the street or you know doing anything to do to, to get the drug but it's just like the mental part is the hardest thing yeah because once you once i get off the the the, the, the physical part's gone it's like why do i why am i going back to it i'm trying to cope with something All right, welcome back, everybody. We're here with Malik. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good yourself. Good, good. Malik uh, walked up to me. Thought I was a. Uh, where'd you thought I was from? Uh, I thought you were what? Um, what? Lost in Phoenix. Oh, those guys. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're from were. Arizona, right? Yeah, I thought you were Art, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I used no. to go back and forth to um, to Arizona, go yeah. visit my auntie before she passed away from cancer. So um, I was subscribed to them because they're everywhere, like on TikTok and stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty viral. Yeah. And, um, hey, so you follow these channels? Um, What's the reason? You just interested in this stuff? Well, it's like I've been on and off of these, like, you know, these blues and 30s, whatever, yeah. you know, since 2020. Yeah. So, like, I've been doing a lot of research, trying to stop and see other people's stories and stuff like that. And when you search up that type of stuff, yeah. like, like, related searches come up. Yeah. So, like, channels like yours. Yeah. You know? How old are you? Uh, so, at, uh, I'm 26 now. This is four years ago, 22. So you've been following these channels, but you do want to get off the blues or whatever? Yeah, I've been on and off the blues. I mean, last year I was off them for six months. Yeah, you sound like an intelligent guy. Yeah, man. I have a, um, what, I, what, December of 2020, I got my associate's degree, and then um, I couldn't even go back to college and finish because I was, it was already downhill after the pills. That's yeah. When, that's when it started heavy. Can so. we take it to the beginning? Yeah. Where so, were you born? Uh, Inglewood, California in 1997. Inglewood, yeah. and then um, close to the Ram Stadium. Oh yeah, and then yeah. you went to uh, what school did you go to? What's high school? I went to Liberty High School. Okay, and then uh, how about junior high? Bob Miller. Bob Miller yeah. and Bob Miller's in Henderson. Okay. Uh, Liberty High School is in over there by the M Resort, kind of down St. Rose, and then Twitch Elementary. That's where I went for elementary. School. Okay, how long were you in Inglewood though? Until I was eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. So you're too young to, uh, but you probably saw a lot of violence over there, huh? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Some, um, I remember I did first grade there in kindergarten. Yeah, yeah. Me, and my, uh, me and my twin sister. I remember, I remember stuff. I went to a church oh, school. Oh, gangs are very prevalent there back then. There probably wasn't any gangs in elementary school, right? Oh no, no, not not there. But, but I still saw it prevalent in the, you know, and still till I was 18 because I was going back and forth from oh. my city um, because we had a house out there. Okay. Yeah, my family had a house out there until we sold it in 2015. You were raised with both parents? No, just my mother. Just my mother. Really, my um, my grandma's like my mom. Like, like, okay. She's my number one, and then she's my mother. Okay, your grandma's still alive? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Where does yeah. she live? Henderson. Oh, Henderson, right here. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right, and then um, so you went to high school, you graduated. Mm -hmm. What'd you do after? Uh, went to college right after. I went to. I started off. Uh, I was taking some classes at uh, CSN. Yeah. That's a cheaper way to do it. You know, um, take your core classes first. Pick your major later. So remind us what CNN, CN, what would you say? CSN. CSN, where's that at? Uh, that's uh, College of Southern Nevada. That's okay. right there off of um, College Drive okay. in Henderson. And then they have another uh, location. I think it's the Charleston one. Okay. And I was I was living in Henderson at the time because right after I graduated high school, yeah. I had a job right next to my grandma's house. So I was like, you know, I might as well move, move in with my grandma. Yeah. Moved there and then I was working and then I was going to college at the same time. I've been working since I was 16. Yeah. I was always working. What did you want to do as a little kid? What were your dreams? <laughs> like a video game designer or, or like an astronomer. Oh yeah, are you good at math? I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm yeah. decent at it. Sciences. Yeah, but I really, I really like, um, like, uh, I like writing. You like writing? I like writing in English, and stuff like okay. that. Okay, yeah. so you're a writer. Yeah. That's you like writing screenplays and things like that? Um, I like more. I, I like. I used to like to write books and stuff like that. Oh, books. Yeah. Well, we're gonna. We talked about high school. Then, um, you, what kind of jobs have you had? Ready? Okay. Have you, you had jobs before? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, you graduated high school. You like books. And then, what kind of jobs you get into? So, when I was 15, I mean, I, I've always liked like saving money and getting money and buying my own stuff and yeah. getting, you know. Cause like I don't know, I was kind of spoiled as a kid, but my family still made sure that, that you know I still have to. If I wanted something, I got to go out and get it myself. So yeah. when I was 15, I worked in my school's cafeteria. That was actually a legal job because I needed a work permit, and yeah. I was getting paid to go to school. I was working yeah. in the cafeteria, and then when I turned 16, I started working at uh, Popeye's Chicken, and I worked there all the way till I was 18. And then um, okay. after that, I uh, started doing um, a lot of housekeeping work at the casinos and like the culinary union. And okay. then I started uh, the main job I was really doing was bar backing. I yeah. wanted to become a bartender as well as a side as a side hustle. You know? All right. When did drugs get introduced into your life? Oh man, I'm gonna really say my mom. She actually apologized for this. Um, I say second grade. 
Second grade. I was on uh, Adderall. And that's actually, you know, that's legal meth. That's one molecule off from, from, from meth. It's just a doctor's meth. So I was, on, I was on Adderall from second grade to ninth grade. You, uh, did you have a behavior problem in school? ADHD. ADHD? Yeah. So that's why I mean, my, the doctor told my mother about, you know, putting him on Adderall. I was on it. That's like, what, second grade to ninth grade? I think it was 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's technically getting high, I guess, if you want to say. But um, after that, I was, what, probably 10th, 11th grade, I was probably starting to smoke weed. And then um, started smoking weed every day, probably when I turned 17. I started like, smoking weed every single day. It was just weed. And then um, when I turned 18, that's when in, the Xanax came in. And I was I was on Xanax hard for a while, and um, I, I really don't kind of remember a lot of being 19. Yeah. So Xanax, Xanax, oh, okay. Yeah, I, Affects your memory, huh? Yeah, I, there's been times where um, I fell asleep in a Carl's Jr. driveway, man, um, with my foot on the brake. Yeah. And um, and then um, I woke up to an officer breaking the window and dragging me out, and I wake up in a, a padded room, and I'm all because of Xanax. I don't even know why I was there. It's, it's kind of it's just scary. It's a scary drug, you know. Yeah. You don't know what you were doing. You have no control of anything. So, How did you get introduced to the blues? Oh, uh, okay. So, I've been in a lot of car accidents, and so I had a lot of pain management doctors. They put me on pain management medicine, and it was actually the M15s, real M15s, real Roxys, oxycodone. And so I was on that for about a year. And then the pandemic happened. The lockdown happened. My friend. I guess I, I thought he was my friend. He showed me these pills, and then it said M30 on it. They look exactly like my prescription pills, but this is when my doctor started to cut me off. They started to like, you know, try to, you know, take away the pills or like take a, lower my dose and then get me off, take me, take, take me off and get me off of them. But um, I was still in pain, stuff like that. So once I couldn't get pills from my doctor, where do you think I'm gonna go? Where do people go? You know, the streets. But I really thought they were real pills. I never thought of, you know, about press pills, about you know, fentanyl. Or, a lot of these pills aren't even fentanyl, it's all trend dope. So, but um, yeah, that's when I started to do the blues. And then after I was doing the, those M30s for a month, it was already, I was already hooked. Like, hooked, like on those. So, I just thought it was 15 milligrams more. You ever suffer withdrawals? Oh man. What do I, withdrawals feel like off the blues? It, 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 it feel, it's, it's the worst, it's, it's the worst thing. It's like you want to crawl out of your own skin, but you, you can't do anything, restless legs, yourself, um, you can't, no energy, no appetite. Um, you, you can't do anything for yourself. You can't do anything. You can't, you, you know, you're dehydrated. You can't sleep. You, there's, there's, it's literally, I'd rather have a regular a cold, you know? This is, this is worse than anything I've ever experienced. What's your message to young people wanting to get into the blues? Don't ever do them. Don't ever. It's not worth it because you got to remember, um, you're not just hurting yourself. You're also hurting the people around you. You know, like your families. You know, you're putting your family through it as well. And that, I didn't realize that for a long time. You know, yeah. I didn't know I was putting my, my grandma through it and stuff like that. But they're suffering as well. Yeah. That's why my grandma. She goes to something called Al-Anon. I don't know if you ever heard about that. Yeah, I know. My grandma goes to Al-Anon every Tuesday. Yeah. Every Tuesday, she's been going after that for a year. You have periods of sobriety? Of course. I've done it before, so I, I know there's hope. Because last year, I was off of it for six months. Congratulations. Yeah, but then I'll, I started working at the airport. Yeah. Money's one of my triggers. When I get some money, yeah, I feel like I should reward myself. Yeah. And I, 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 could, I could just do one pill, but it's not ever just one pill. You can't just do one. Yeah. Rarely, anybody can actually control opiates like that, you know, if, if you oh. actually, actually like opiates. But, um, uh, what if someone wanted to help you and they could? Um, do you have an email address or yeah, some email form of social media? Yeah. I what is it? Uh, it's my it's my first and last name at gmail.com, which is Malik Roberson at gmail.com. Yeah, and, check uh, out your emails. You know, we have a lot of nice people wanting to help others. I mean, I would also I would love to receive help from people. It's just it's it's scary. It's scary because you want to get off of it, and you know you don't want to be out here on the street or you know doing anything to do to, to get the drug. But it's just like it's I think. You know, the physical part, the physical withdrawals, it's, 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 it's horrible, but to me, the mental part is the hardest thing. Yeah. Because once you once I get off the, 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 the physical part's gone, it's like, why do I, why am I going back to it? Obviously, it's because, you know, the mental thing is... is, is, is what do you think there. you're using? Because obviously, I'm trying to cope with something. Yeah. Everybody's trying to cope with something. If you're a drug addict, you're yeah. running from something. You're trying to cope from something. You're trying to forget. Yeah. But the reality is, even when you sober up, the problem's still there. Ain't shit changed. Yeah, you know? Did you have a traumatic childhood at all? Um, I didn't have my father. My father wasn't there. My dad was in prison. 
You know, he's yeah. out. He's doing great now. My dad was an addict. Yeah. You know, my grandpa was an addict. My grandpa has 33 years clean. In your so, opinion, what does that do to a child when the dad's not there? My mom can only teach me so much. Mm. You know, my mom can't teach me how to be a man. Yeah. My grandma can't teach me how to be a man. Yeah. My dad could have did that. You know, yeah. a man can only teach a man how to be a man. You my talk mom, to my him mom now. Did a great job though. She did. You know, she was struggling herself. You know, but now yeah. my mom's doing great. She's she mom works two jobs. She works at the post office, and then she also does a little side gig. Um, 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 doing uh, liquor sampling. And my mom works hard. She's the hardest working woman I've ever met. But it kind of sucks because, you know, she, she wants the she wants the relationship that I have with my grandma, yeah. and we don't have that. Yeah. You know, we never had, but we're still close. Yeah. You know, me and my dad are just kind of like strangers. So. Well, Malik, I could really tell you want to change your life. I do. Um, what would you when you were a kid? What was your dreams? I just, I, I, I just, I wanted to own my own business. That's why yeah. I went to school for business finance. What kind of business? Um, a barbershop. Barbershop. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, haircuts are never going to be out of business. Yeah. So. You do you have a license? Or? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. I just went to business. I went to school for business finance, and yeah. um, I have my associate's degree in that. So I don't have a barber license. I didn't never cut hair or anything like that. But um, I would like to learn how to cut hair. If I don't learn how to do that, I'll just own the business. You know. Maybe someone can help you out I'd watching this video. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. But I mean, I know that we had to make a whole business plan. Yeah. You know, it's for you know for somebody to actually invest into that. Yeah. So I'm showing that you're actually serious. What would you like to see yourself in two years? Off this, off the blues, and never on them ever again. It's not yeah. worth it at all. My little sister went to um, my high, same high school. She just graduated. Now she's off to FSU. She saw what the blues did to me. She's terrified of them. She yeah. said they're doing, they're doing them in the school bathroom. This is my same high They're school. They're doing them in the school bathroom? Yes. Oh, man. I would have never thought. You know, I used to smoke weed in the bathroom, but now this, 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 these blues are something else. Yeah. It's, it's a whole nother, it's like, it's a whole nother ball game to me. Have you tried rehab? Any of the rehabs yeah, in Nevada? Yeah, I've six rehabs. Oh, yeah. Desert have? Hope. I've been to Desert Hope, Landmark Recovery twice, um, Spring Mountain, Desert Parkway. Yeah. I've been to everywhere. Everywhere. I've done all the programs. I've been to Salvation Army as well. Yeah. What, um, do, you, what do you think it's going to take? Hit rock bottom. Mm. And um, all those times I was um, sent to rehab was to, um, from my family. It was all in an um, ultimatum. Yeah. I just didn't want to hit the streets. Yeah. And then I knew right when I got to rehab, I'm like, man, right when I get out of, got out of rehab, I'm just going to get high. Yeah. So what's the point going? Yeah. There's no point going to rehab if you already made that reservation yeah. to get high when you get out. So yeah. there's no point. So I'm ready to actually do something and be serious about it. Yeah. I don't see going to rehab um, is doing any good. But just sitting in a room yeah. for 30 days, and doing nothing is just a waste of time. Yeah. You know, until you're ready to actually get help and actually do something, you know, and put your foot down and want to change your life. Because the only person that can change your life is yourself. Nobody very, else can do anything for it. You're a very smart young man. Yeah. Um, I wish you the best. What's your message to the world? Love one another. And just help the next man. All right, Malik. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. God bless you. You as well.